Should you play a ranger in Baldur's Gate 3? In this video, we're going to talk about the ranger class, subclasses, and why I've loved playing as a ranger so far. For context, I'm about 60 hours into my first full playthrough as a purely Beastmaster ranger. So what makes the ranger good or why should you play one? First off, let's give some stats on the ranger and subclasses. The ranger's primary stat is dexterity, their saving throw proficiencies are strength and dexterity, and they have a hit die of 1d10. They have proficiencies in simple weapons, martial weapons, shields, light armor, and medium armor. As for subclasses, you have the option from Hunter, Gloomstalker, and my personal favorite, Beastmaster. So what does each of these mean? To start out, every subclass gets the same two unique class features. One is called Favored Enemy, which is selecting your favorite type of enemy to do more damage to. And next is the Natural Explorer, which allows you to select from a list of resistances. You can select an Urban Tracker ability, which gives you a gain for sleight of hand, or my personal favorite, the Beast Tamer. Beast Tamer allows you to use a Find Familiar spell or cantrip to bring out a small pet such as a bird, crab, a spider, a cat, and a few others. Onto the subclasses, Beastmaster allows you to summon a bear or dire raven, wolf, or a wolf spider. The cool thing about playing as one is the companions you summon actually level with you, gaining new abilities, more attack, more health, and even new appearances. Each companion pet has different advantages as well. Dire ravens can scout ahead of the party, apply a bad omen status effect on enemies, while bears can allow you to do the roar and aggro any enemies around you. Spiders are also great for scaring away goblins and causing someone to get stuck in their web. As such, you can freely switch between any one of these, but you can only do so once per short rest. During my playthrough, they've been very helpful, especially during some of the more toughened scenarios I've encountered into Act 2. Next up, we'll talk Gloomstalker. I've heard many good things about this subclass, but I haven't actually tried it myself. Gloomstalker, from my knowledge, gives more mobility and bonus damage on your first turn. You get abilities like Dread Ambusher, Superior Dark Vision, Umbral Shroud, and Disguise Self. Gloomstalker seems to be more of a, a better class for someone who wants to sneak around and do some quick damage, and like I said, it can be very fun from what I've heard. The final subclass is Hunter. The Hunter subclass, in my opinion, is the most Ranger core class that you can play as. You don't get many unique abilities besides the Hunter's Prey, which allows you to do extra damage to a certain type of group or enemy again. Either way, every class has use cases more than others, and I'm positive there is one for the Hunter, even if it is just for role-playing purposes. And that is absolutely a viable choice in Baldur's Gate 3, which we'll talk about very soon. Regardless of what subclass you choose, each one does get a list of cantrips that they can learn that is a level 1 to level 3 ranger spells. My personal favorites are Speak with Animals, Hunter's Mark, and Dark Vision. There's a whole list of them, so you can probably look into them per level as well if need be. Now let's talk a little bit about roleplay and dialogue aspect of playing a ranger. During my playthrough, I chose proficiency in animal handling, nature, and I believe medicine. During most of Act 1, it was rare I would get the option to use my ranger background or animal handling, but they did happen at least a number of times. Going into Act 2 though, I found myself using it a lot. Most of the time, the ranger dialogue tends to be more of a character having prior knowledge of a legendary beast. They might mention how they capture one or face one in the wild or heard a story of one. It all depends on the scenario. The simplest way to compare it to is kind of how you felt when you played as Geralt in the Witcher series where he recalls a monster or a beast he faced before. The ranger conversations play out very similar to that. Playing as a ranger has been a ton of fun personally. Growing up, I used to always choose the spellcaster class like a wizard or warlock. But as I got older, I've always found myself playing as a ranger with a bow, an arrow, or a crossbow class, and having a pet companion. Honestly, the pet companion has been the biggest selling point for me too. My biggest complaint is that you don't really get to bond with your companion similar to you do with the other party members. They're sort of just out there with you during combat when you call them out, and that's kind of it. 
My other complaint is I do love the look of the wolf since I'm a big dog guy, but the problem with using the wolf is they're not very mobile or as much as I want them to be. And then if I do want to use something with mobility, at that point I would just go for the dire raven. The cool thing about playing as a rager is there's always different ways to play as one. As for how I'm playing, I'm just about at the end of act two I'm running a two hand crossbows as my main weapon, using the bear most of the time for encounters and the bird familiar for blinding enemies. I actually do the second most damage in my party most of the time because of my pet and my crossbow bonuses. It's a ton of fun, so I definitely recommend it. If you would like to see how I actually play it, feel free to stop by the stream sometime as I make my way into Act 3. I live stream just about every day at 6.30 p.m. Eastern during the weekdays and 9.30 a.m. Eastern on weekends. I do plan on making another one of these videos once I complete the game on some thoughts and maybe some more feedback for Act 3 as playing as a ranger. So keep a lookout for that. For now, tap that like button for a bonus to your next roll and roll a critical success on that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.